What's going on guys and welcome back. Uh, it's a Wednesday morning here and today's video we're gonna be talking about some aluminum here and more importantly how to set up one of these old school machines. So this is something uh, I struggled with for a little while. Um, when I got started in TIG welding I didn't learn aluminum uh, till way down, down uh, the line. Um, I mostly did like mild steel, uh, copper nickel alloys, like stuff like that. I never really got involved in aluminum. It wasn't stuff we saw often on the ship. So that's why I never really picked it up. And then uh, now we just started getting into it, doing some aluminum work uh, for some yachts, a lot of aluminum on those. So I kept running into some issues um, where I'd set this up and let's just say you wanted to do a fillet weld, um, you know, something like this. I just got some scrap here on the bench you're going to play around with. And uh, I go to do a fillet, say, in this joint here, and the arc would be dancing all around. The metal would just pull up even though I was trying to pump all the heat into it and get the base metal melted. And it just was not cooperating. I couldn't direct the arc. I couldn't control the arc. Um, and I just didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was digging on the forums and trying to figure out how to get this machine running right because I knew certainly that you could do aluminum with this. And I thought maybe something was wrong with the machine. Something wasn't set right. So I uh, finally got it figured out and I wanted to share a quick video with you guys on how to do it because it was a struggle for me to find in the interwebs how to uh, set this up. So this is a, uh, a Miller Sinker Wave 250. It's from 1988 and uh, yeah, it's an old school transformer style machine. So for the younger guys and like myself, I grew up with an inverter machine and completely different setup. So if you go to run one of these transformer sh machines, kind of some of what you knew about aluminum welding and setting up on those isn't really applicable. So you kind of got to re restart, reevaluate what you got going on. So I got this welder for basically uh, nothing. I built a little cart for it, got a water cooler, got a torch and kind of got this thing up and running. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good welder. You can pick these up super cheap. I mean, for a new sinker wave, you're probably going to drop with all the fixings, you know, water cooler, cart, bottle, everything, uh, you know, upwards five ten thousand dollars $10,000. Uh, these you can pick up for between a couple hundred bucks and maybe like a thousand for a mint one. But they're super good old school machines. Uh, sometimes just a little tricky to set up. And this video really isn't going to be anything about like how to TIG weld. This is really just for machine setups. If you already know how to weld, and you're just trying to get into aluminum, struggling with your machine a little bit, this is more a, a how-to with that. Uh, we're not gonna really go into the fundamentals of welding. Maybe that's something I'll put some videos together later on about, but this is really just machine setup. And then over here, we're gonna practice on. I don't even have a formal welding bench here, uh, just kind of getting set up in this uh, new space. And I had to do a small aluminum project and I just threw some basically aluminum plates down on this uh, workbench I got just to make myself a little station. I uh, got my ground clamp set up. Uh, this material is thick enough that it'll dissipate the heat before it goes into this uh, board here or anything like that. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you don't really need much to get going here. This is a super simple little basic at-home garage setup you could do. And so now on to the panel. This is where all the magic happens. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is, uh, obviously we're gonna be doing some AC. So we're gonna switch this knob over here. I really shouldn't have uh, mounted this handlebar here because now it makes this really difficult to turn and I always bust my knuckles. But you know, that's kind of things you live and learn with. So now that we are in AC, uh, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is put our high frequency in continuous. So all this other stuff is pretty much fine. I'm running a foot pedal, so uh, we'll leave the contact and remote, amperage control remote, so I can do it with the foot pedal. Creator time, we're not gonna worry about any of that goodness, uh, nor the timer for it. The next thing, and the most important thing, we are gonna check out here is this AC balance. Now this is where all the magic happens for aluminum welding. This is the most important knob right here. So you're gonna see, uh, I was previously doing some mild steel, so I had it on number two for balanced and DC welding. So DC, obviously uh, pretty straightforward there. But when you shift this baby into uh, AC, 
if you leave this down low, like you're probably gonna you, like myself starting out. I was like, okay, I probably gotta turn it up to like a five, and uh, you know that'll be good for aluminum um, because here you'll notice it says max penetration, max cleaning, and this uh, has to do with how much time the AC wave spends uh, positive versus negative because alternating current, you know, goes positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, so that changes. Also, how much it uh, either does a cleaning effect, where you'll see that kind of spread out, oxidized, uh, I guess, coating, however you want to describe it, uh, or penetration. So how much uh, you're going to pump that material and penetrate it. So I figured, oh, that's a good starting point. Uh, not the case. And then I thought there's something wrong with the machine because the arc was all over the place. So you're going to want to take this knob and you're going to want to crank this baby up. And then you're gonna be like, oh, that's probably enough there, right? Nope, you're gonna wanna keep on going. So let's set that uh, there, that should be fine. This knob actually goes a little past 10. Um, it's one of those, you know, high performance knobs. So we'll leave it at uh, something like nine and a half. All right, so let's go into amps next. Um, this is gonna be kind of a difficult one. Um, so this machine here, if you're running 220, let's say it's in your garage at home or something, you're a weekend warrior um, and you got a 50 amp, uh, garage circuit breaker designated for your welder uh, that's that's good and fine and all but these old style machines because they don't have the new high efficiency uh, technology in them you'll see here uh, on this placard I don't know if you can see it but I'll read it out to you um, these are the different volts this machine can operate at so you got 220 uh, 200 230 460 um, and then it also has the associated amps for what voltage you're running so obviously the higher the volts the lower the amps that's pretty basic uh, electricity stuff there. So at 200 volts, this baby is gonna draw 110 amps cranked all the way up to 310. I mean, we're probably not gonna be that high, but anyway. So that means even at 50% capacity, uh, let's say 150 amps, you're still gonna be pulling 50 amps, which is probably what you got in your garage or your home shop setup. And as a matter of fact, that's what I got here. I just got a 50 amp breaker, nothing crazy, uh, just your average Joe's setup. So that's going to be difficult when you want to do aluminum where you got to be probably pushing up in the 175, 200 uh, range, maybe even a little higher depending on the thicker material you got. Um, so I figured out that I can weld this machine at 175 and not trip the breaker. Granted, I can't run uh, eight inch long uh, strings of weld, but you know, I could do little, uh, little sections of angle iron and stuff like that. So I kind of figured that out where my breaker pops if I go a little further. So, uh, yeah, depending on your setup, this machine may be a little tricky to use. If you only got the 220 at home, you draw on 100 amps at full crank, so even 50 is a struggle to do aluminum. But lucky for you, I have figured out a little secret with that as well, and it's called map gas. So what you do is you set up your little map gas torch. Screw this uh, bad Larry on here. And now you got yourself a torch. And what you're gonna wanna do is say you got a little thicker material. This is only eighth inch, so we won't have any problem with that, but say you're trying to weld this thick stuff right here, maybe uh, some quarter inch plate, something like that, I don't know. Um, but anyway, a little trick I found that requires you to not pump so much current in or need so many amps to get the base metal to melt and start flowing aluminum is you just heat the joint up with the map gas torch to kind of preheat it and like we all know aluminum is a great heat sink and it kind of dissipates the heat very quickly so it's tough to get that heat concentrated and penetrated into the joint get the aluminum flowing properly but this is a really cool trick i figured out and allowed me to dial the amperage down and still do thicker material even though i don't have a jumbo power source so i just preheat that joint a little bit get up all nice and in there and then, uh, yeah, you should be good to go to weld the thicker material. And then moving along on the little panel here, we got our control. We're not going to worry about that. And then post flow time, that's going to be kind of dependent on your setup. I got a water cooler, um, so I'm not requiring so much on the gas flow to cool my torch down. So I keep this uh, pretty low, um, maybe five or ten seconds or whatever. Uh, if you're using thicker tungsten, you got to gas cooled torch you may need to crank that up so uh, that's pretty much the setup there and then uh, for the argon oh man we're getting a little low 
we're gonna have to go in for a refill. Um, I normally crank my gas flow up pretty good too. I'm gonna leave that at like a 25 or a 30 um, just to get that shielding coverage. I got a ceiling fan in here, so sometimes I can't like totally get it covered as well as I'd like. And then just uh, a regular pure tungsten. Uh, I think I'm running 332nd here, and I got a number eight cup, got a gas lens in there, as you can see. And this is the, just tor torches this. I don't know, it's a flex head though, it's a pretty sweet little torch. A CK20, I guess. Um, flex head makes it pretty nice, a little more uh, maneuverable. But anyway, let's get into it. We'll do a little uh, test pass. I don't know if I'll be able to film that because I'd probably have to put a, wel a welding lens over the camera. Um, but anyway, this is just going to give you an idea of like if you set the machine up that way, what kind of weld you get. And then if we want to do some more videos later on, we could show you how to get those welds. But this is mainly for setup if you already know how to TIG weld. So guys, safety first. We got our little uh, Miller welding jacket i think i picked this up on amazon for about 20 bucks so that's a good value right there and it even says miller on it so you look even cooler and then uh we got some gloves dropping stuff over here uh these are just tillman 35 l's um not the thinnest of gloves but also not the thickest this is kind of what i like everybody has a different preference so don't worry about what I like, worry about what you like. And uh, we got some aluminum fill rod. We have some aluminum in front of us. Amazing, right? And we got our foot pedal set up, our ground, our makeshift little workbench. Um, we got our hood. And uh, I'm gonna go grind the tungsten quick because that's probably where you wanna start when you're TIG welding is make sure you got a clean tungsten. And then we're gonna go from there. Now this machine is uh, wicked loud, so I'm sure there's a lot of fan noise in the video going on right now. But we're gonna get set up here, do a little test it. I got this, I don't know, block thing I was welding when I was doing some practice. We're just gonna do a little fill it weld on top here. So, like I said, we grab our map gas, heat up the joint a little bit, get things flowing. That should be good. So we did our first little test it, and as you can see, it came out uh, pretty perfect. Nice little fill weld, joint is evenly filled, it looks nice, and yeah, we call that a success. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for checking out this video, and uh, I don't know, maybe if this goes well, we'll do uh, some more welding videos, I certainly got tons of little tips and tricks I've picked up over the years of doing this kind of stuff. and. Uh, Especially I'm, since I'm running one of these old school machines. Maybe not too many guys left doing that. Everyone's moved on to the new inverter stuff. Um, so obviously guys doing this are going to have different setup, different requirement, maybe different tips and tricks. Uh, so anyway, uh, stay tuned to the channel. You can follow along. Uh, we got tons of content, uh, car stuff, fabrication projects, and be doing all that good stuff. So thank you guys for checking out this video and stay tuned. We'll see you on the next one.